So the first step is to throw the plate itself. So what you're going to need is a bucket of water, a sponge, a chamois, a cut wire, wooden knife tool, a needle tool, a couple of ribs, different sizes are great, a sponge, and your clay. So here I've got about four pounds of clay and I'm going to actually alter the rim of this plate so I'm going to make the rim a little bigger uh, or wider than I normally probably would so that I've got a little wiggle room to play with it. If you do not want to alter your plates and you just want to throw a plate, that's fine too. Um, you can use three and a half to four pounds of play, makes a nice sized dinner plate. So we're going to start by centering this so I get it as close to the center of my wheel as possible. And then I'm going to seal it down to the wheel. Okay, so when you're centering larger amounts of clay, which can be tricky for some folks, is I'm going to actually take this in chapters from the top down. So I'm just going to center this top section first. And again, when I'm centering, I'm pushing in the back or the part closest to me with the heel of my hand and squeezing in the front with my fingers. and slowly moving my hands up. And then we'll cone that down. So when I cone down, I'm gently pushing in on the side. As I push down, not directly on the top, but just off to the side of that center point. So I'm pushing away from me with this part of my hand here because the, this is the more stable part of your hand to push on. This fleshy part will make it harder to center because there's give. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the second chapter and I'm gonna cone that up into this part here that I now have in a little more control. It's not quite centered yet, but it will be in a couple more pulls. So as I'm pushing here, you can think of your hand like a piston pushing away from you. So I'm taking this part of my hand right at the bat and I'm going to push from the back of the clay, which is right here, and I'm pushing away from me. And I'm going to do that with both of my hands and you'll see what happens. Now I'm not moving up yet, I'm just pushing away from me. Okay, so what's happened is this top has gone really wonky. You can see that. So there's a couple of ways that you can assist with that, with that wobble. You can stack your hands one above the other. That looks like this. Or you can put your thumbs together as you push from the back. That looks like this. It's whatever's more comfortable for you and your hands. Everybody's hands are different sizes but three and a half to four pounds of clay all looks the same. So we're going to slowly move up and you will need to continually get water on your hands for this. So just remember to come away slow and come back to your clay slow. Also, a thing to remember is don't try to center all this clay with really hard clay. Your clay should be fairly soft to start so that you don't have to fight with it to get it centered. Okay, we're going to cone this down halfway and then we'll cone it up again and we should be centered all the way through.
Okay, so now you've got a disc that's centered on the side and on the top. And you cone up and down as many times as it takes you to get to this point. You don't want to throw a plate uh, or a bowl or a mug that's off center. It's just going to cause you a lot of um, struggle. So make sure that you get the centering part down and then move on to the next step. So what we're going to do for the next step of this plate is we're going to make it a lot flatter than this. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this little outside part here. I'm not even going to bother with trying to center that. So to do that, you take your sponge and you just kind of let your sponge ride along the bat right next to your clay where my finger is. And that way I don't end up with an uneven rim later. Okay, so to flatten this out, what I like to do is I like to take my sponge with a little bit of water in it and I hold that in my dominant hand. For me, that's my right hand. So I'm going to take and make a fist and I'm going to push down right in the center. As I knead the water, I can squeeze it. So I'm pushing down right in the center. Now you'll see that right here you get a little bit of space. So you want to make sure that you push that in as you go along. So I'm pushing that in with this part of my hand on the side. And you'll notice too that my hands always stay connected to each other. Okay, so we're going to take and we're going to push down in the center and widen that out a little bit more. So I'm pushing right in the middle. And then I'll slowly draw my hand towards myself. And then I'm going to push the side in so that I don't end up with air underneath there. Okay, so what we've got now is we've got a pretty wide disc of clay. I've got about one finger's width on the outside of this disc here. So I'm actually going to work on the rim now. You want to make sure as you go along that you compress your plate really well with your sponge. We've just asked a lot of this clay. We've pushed it up, pushed it down hold these particles apart. So you want to compress those particles back together. The big thing with plates is they really love to crack. So this will help you um, with preventing those cracks. And also trimming plates when they're really wet will cause cracks. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in our trimming demo. So I'm just gently starting in the center and moving out toward the outside. Okay, so to make a rim of a plate, everybody throws them a little bit differently. This is how I like to do it. I push right here. Let me move the bucket so you can see where my finger will be. I push right here. I like to use my sponge because my fingers get dry really fast. So I use the sponge and there's more of a surface area that stays wet longer. And I can also use both sides of the sponge as I'm throwing and it helps a lot with keeping that clay on the disc and not on my fingers. So I actually am gonna push right here where the clay meets the bat. Remember to support one hand with the other. Don't, you don't want them separate. They need to be one nation. So I'm pushing up. You can see this rim start to pop up a little bit. And then we're going to clean off our sponge. 
and we're going to compress that, especially right here. This is another area that plates tend to be weak, is right where the rim meets the surface, the food surface area. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this rim a little bit taller. So I'm essentially throwing a, a dog bowl shape here. So I want to be careful when I'm throwing, my inside hand is not pinching at this point right here. So where I just talked about, this is gonna be your, one of your weak spots. So you don't want to thin that out very much. I'm trying to make this rim taller without making that part particularly thin. So I am really cognizant of how much I pinch here as I pull that rim up. So I don't pinch as much there. So I'll try to get my fingers over here. You can see them. I'm pinching up. And I'm just going straight up and down with my pinchers. We've talked about the butterfly pin or the ant pinchers. So straight up and down. Remember at this point too that you want to slow your wheel down. You will have a lot more control throwing if you learn to center fast and then slow down as you go along. And then we want to compress. Compressing is really important. And we're going to make a couple more pulls and make this room a little bit taller. I'm not actually going to make this any um, taller because I don't want my rim to become super thin right now because as I go to make it into a plate, it will thin out as I stretch it out. So if you start with this thin, you, will, you might have some problems um, with it collapsing. It's not the end of the world. Just wedge up another piece of clay and try again. We're going to make sure we compress. And then I also want to clean up the sides now because it's easier to reach them at this point. So I start with my wooden knife tool. The angled side of the tool goes toward the pot. So you want to lead with the tip of the tool. And go straight down. And then you're going to take your needle tool and you're going to undercut. So you're going to keep the, this sharp end of the tool flat on the bat and you're going to slide that in underneath the parts that you just cut. Okay, and then we're going to give ourselves a little guide for our cut wire. So we take the pointy end of the wooden knife tool and we're going to slide that right at the bottom of the plate there, just a little bit. And then I'm going to take the flat edge of my finishing rib and I'm going to clean up the slip on the outside. So I'm taking and I'm tipping this rib away from me just a little bit. It's not straight on. If you use the rib straight on a wall, it will chatter. So if you tip it away from you just a little, that helps with that chattering so that the wall can pass on it a little easier. I also have my hand on the inside of the pot and that helps brace the pushing on the outside. My hands are connected. All 
All right, so now we're going to make a plate. So you can do this with a rib. I like to use my fingers so that I can feel what's happening. So I'm going to take my pointer finger. My Uncle Sam wants you to make a plate. You're going to dip it in water. I'm going to hover just above the floor and I'm using my finger like a lever to push this rim down so it'll go from here to there. like so. And then you take your rib. Again, you can use the big rib or if you prefer the small rib and clean up the edges. <laughs> thing that you want to do is take your wet chamois and you want to clean up your rim. So you're going to wrap your chamois around the rim. Remember our hot dog and our hot dog bun. And you just let it ride. We are going to cut these rims up a little bit at the end. So if you don't do that step, it's not the end of the world. You can do it with a sponge later. Um, then the last thing that you want to do is your cut wire. So plates, because of the nature of how wide and flat they are, you have to keep them on the bat to dry. There's no way to shift them in one class period without causing twisting and warping. And because they like to crack, and it's pretty easy for them to do so, it's better to let them dry slow and flat where they are. So if you use a splash pan, take your splash pan off to do this so that your hands can go kind of below the level of the wheel head. You're gonna take your cut wire and wrap it to where you've got a good hand handle on your toggles. And then you're going to keep your fingers on the bat, but your hands a little bit lower and pull that toward you. That way you're not cutting off the bottom of the plate. Okay, and that's what we're going to do for this class period. And then in the next class period, we'll unwrap these and we'll um, see how wet they are. We may have to flip them over for week three trimming because plates take a long time to dry. So we'll do um, another project in the interim of trimming and altering these plates probably. So this is the week one part. Okay, good job.